This episode is partnered by Living Realms, an amazing LCG based over in Castleford. Go check out their website to find out all the products Flesh and Blood related. And if you're into other games, they can sort you out there as well. If you're a patron, you'll get 5% discount on your order as well. So uh, good time to be a patron. Anyway, go enjoy the episode. <laughs> I am. Are you going to so, no. What about all of our new listeners who don't know who, who we are? We don't. We, we get... Look, 44 <laughs> episodes in. No introductions. No, what are we? What the beer we bits do, for? That's what the beer bears. Trip, you're just Simon, wasting my... how are you feeling? Simon, how are you doing? You, you, you've just travelled back from a, a faraway land. I have. I'm very tired today. Uh, I'm recovering from a wonderful week away in India. Wow, wow, that is far. Whereabouts? Uh, in we, India. No, yeah. <laughs> we flew to Delhi. We flew to Delhi. Oh, wow. Um, and then we travelled. We did the well-trodden tourist route of Delhi, Agra, and Jaipur. Wow. I saw the photo of your... Um... So tired. Sunglasses. Uh, yeah. That With was the that... Taj Mahal. Well, not the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal was one wonder of the world. And then I saw the picture of you in your glasses and thought... You could see the Taj Mahal in the sunglasses. Did you not see that? Oh. That was the whole point of the picture. I mean, That's, that... why, that's oh. why I thought you said... So this is the confusion. Is Hamish was like, yeah. that's a great Photoshop. Simon thought that Hamish meant that you'd Photoshop <laughs> the Taj Mahal into the sunglasses. Yeah. And now that's we're finding exactly out it. that Hamish didn't even notice that the Taj Mahal no. was in the sunglasses. I, what I meant was, is I thought that would be a good head it would to be, Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> for the thumbnail. Oh. Yeah. I thought that was just a good Photoshopped head for our thumbnails. <laughs> no, Nikki's and then I thought uh, artistic go... direction likes a, a reflective sunglass oh, photo. Okay. But then I thought Trip would do a load of work on the reflection. Yeah right. Yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> you see my thumb there. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I hey, put a on, lot of like, when, you, yeah. when you used to go near the start, he does. He go... does go all out on thumbnails. Uh, well, no, you no. Know, Trip has calmed job. down quite a lot, but got when we started, <laughs> Trip was a mad lad for the Photoshop. See, there was a I whole point where you actually costumed that, like the. The clothes oh, with oh, the beard. Yeah, Lexi. yeah, Lexi's whole thing was costumes. I was like, yeah, with Jesus Christ, that was quite. That's good. one of my favorite. I did exude confidence, didn't I? With like, yeah, a weird the appetizer. Yeah, comfortizer. Great. The um, yeah. the only thing that beats like Trip's thumbnails is his eighties and nineties movie poster memes. Yeah, oh, I haven't done any of those in ages. I know. Oh, yeah, I'm very much one for doing something and then stopping it. Bro, you know those on, movie, this, you know those movie yeah. poster things would actually be amazing thumbnails. Yeah, I know, but they actually took a lot of work. So <laughs> <I'm kind> of <laughs> <stopped doing. laughs> there was some. Of, I, I, this is the trouble with me is I, I don't, I don't, when I'm doing it, I really get into it. You're a sprinter. I'm way too long on it, and I'm just like, this is so much work. I'm just gonna do it. No, trip. You're a sprinter. <laughs> you're a sprinter. If you, you, you'd, you'd yeah. be the best hundred mile, like hundred mile, hundred, hundred yards. 100. 100 mile sprints. Yeah. No, yeah. 100 yard. Yeah. We moved back into the non decimal era. Oh. The trip trip would do a, a sprint and be like, oh my God, nothing can beat this guy. And then he'd be like, do a Rick and Morty and goes, oh, I'm bored. See you later. The I like to live alive. my life to the fullest, which means I flit around from thing to thing. I have a few things yeah. I stick with. So. Um, okay. Home news. Home news. <laughs> so Tri Simon hasn't been <laughs> home. He's been to Indian I news. I've got Indian news. Indian news. Tell me your Indian news. Indian news. Then, well, uh... two claps for Indian news. <laughs> on the on the on the. <laughs> side... <laughs> This is such a, on a slightly more serious dreamy uh, no. dreamscape podcast. It was an incredible week. Like the, yeah. I mean, seeing one of the seven wonders of the world in the flesh it was in, it was quite did you cry emotional actually. i didn't nikki, nikki did cry yeah was it was it that was it, to be honest i even saw the i saw the boat and i thought it was quite powerful yeah uh, so it, it's almost unreal like seeing niagara falls was a little bit similar like the scale of it but with the taj mahal people built that like it mm. it's in it doesn't look real. It looks like something of a different world, which was amazing. To, to have it live up 
and exceed expectations was amazing. Um, but yeah, um, highs and lows. Give me your high. So your highest high uh, was Taj Mahal. I think your lowest low uh, was being uh, swindled by a, a shoe cleaner. In on the streets of Delhi, <laughs> Wait, and, and knowing knowing I was being you. knowing I was being swindled, but not being able to do anything about it. Um, Did you get shit basically, shoot? Basically, he put, put, he, put, he put shit on my shoe um, and then charged un- me to clean it off. This is un- <laughs> we don't know where that shit came from. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, They're falling the, from the sky. <laughs> one of the funniest that, bits, though, that that, that is, sounds um, like Wolf of Wall Street. Sell me this pen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one of the funniest things, though, and I can I can probably come away with like a five percent understanding of how celebrities feel. Okay, five percent. Okay. All yeah. Right. Okay. I'm I'm Go in no Simon. way comparing this to being a celebrity, but did they all run up to you? Go. Are you Simon from Push the Point? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Turns out you're no. big in India. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what is big in India? We re- mustache. In India. We really, we really mustache. want to get Bab mustache. in India. <laughs> so I what, think... Why, what was the big deal with yeah, the mustache? Yeah, what was the mustache? So I think, in general, um, Caucasian people in India get a lot of attention because, obviously, you're either foreign or... There's not many worry about, right? Um, but it turns out not many white people have a mustache. Uh, lots of Indian people do have a moustache, and they love a moustache. It cannot be underestimated how much they love. I had people coming up to me, taking photos with a complete stranger, just so that they could keep a memory of my moustache. Wow. Like, I was at the Taj Mahal, and <laughs> about six, seven, maybe eight people, groups of people would come up, and they're, they're like, can we take a photo <laughs> with you, please? What? So people were just literally looking at you yeah. like you were the ninth wonder of the world or something. Yeah, <laughs> your like, I'm walking around and people are giving me like side eyes. They're looking straight at me and smiling. And then people come up to you and they're like, Do you want, can we take a photo with you, please? So I started asking people for money right. and it became a bit of a joke because obviously everything <laughs> costs money in, uh, Did in seriously? India. Did you really? I was like, oh, 100, 100 rupees. Like it was, I wasn't expecting any money, and I didn't get any money. But everyone was oh, like, oh, "Very hey. good, very good." No, like that. No, you're um, white. You're rich. <laughs> Give me the photo. <laughs> so yeah, it was. It was like, oh my god! Like the first two or three times, it's flattering, and then after that, you're like, oh, but I'm actually trying to. Did just you just put enjoy. a mask on, right? Like you know, well, the just... mask has got a mustache. Mm. I don't know if you've seen. Oh yeah, so. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <they'll be> like, <laughs> oh. Do you have a mustache mask? Um, I was going to say, Simon. Like the thing is, though, you you go around the uk and people are, are checking out that bad boy yeah they, they wish they wish um, they were brave enough to go up and take a photo i bet most british people are very polite and yeah. a mustache is 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 less of a it's more of an oddity here in india it's like a regular thing but the oddity was seeing it on a white person mm. and it doesn't help that my wife's got bright colored hair as well so they wanted pictures with both of us i was gonna like, say was time. nikki jealous I think she was a little bit, oh. but she's she's usually one that stands out with the bright hair, mm. uh, and everyone was super keen on them. It was so weird and funny and um, quite endearing as well. So that at massive the same time. queue of people that was behind the Taj Mahal was really it was, queue, it was all to take a picture was that of they all queuing up to get yeah. a picture of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, no. we could we could go on. I managed to avoid any uh, gastrointestinal upsets during the week. I was actually going to say, I thought... Is it too early to tell, though, Simon? You literally got back, like... Yeah, but I think if it's going to happen... Like, basically, Mm. we were given the advice, don't touch the street food and don't drink the water. Like, Mm. even don't do your teeth with the water. So we... Fortunately, we stayed in pretty good hotels and there was, like, an endless supply of bottled water, which felt bad for the environment, but good for my... Gastrointestinal system, yeah. For your environment. <laughs> so we lived off bottled water, even like doing your tea. It's like, do you remember going to to Spain or the Canary Islands as a kid on holiday? No. Do not. No. And and you couldn't drink the water even in Spain as a. Oh like, wait, really? I remember. Yeah, no, I remember going to or France Port, or yeah, like Port, France Europe. or Portugal, and you. Yeah. It's advised you take a big. Get yeah, a two liter bottle of water. We would yeah. ju- we even doing our teeth, we would just use bottled water to do your teeth. Like do you it's, yeah. it's pretty campy. Like you gotta it's like, it's like you're going camping. Stuff. Yeah, I exactly. I thought you were gonna say it's like when you go camping 
question. It is yeah, similar. Camp, yeah. Yeah. So we did that, and then the street food was quite was. I wish I could have tried some of the street food, but I just I would. We were only there for a week. We had such a short time and so much to do, so much to see that any days missed because of like being stuck in the hotel would have been a complete waste. So a sensible decision. Yeah, as the street food looked incredible, like different stalls selling different things, like um, amazing looking curries and not pastries, but like um, bread based. Donut type things and yeah. Hmm. I mean, that sounds really good. Well, done. It, well, the food was amazing. I came across. I've like I found out what tali is. T h a l i. It's like a a platter of different foods with a mix of like a couple of different breads, a couple of different curries, mainly vegetable based. Meat eating is not a massive thing um, yeah. for Indian people, and just the amount of flavor you can get from anyway. Yeah, I managed to steer clear of any nastiness. And I'm back, but I'm super tired because we did like 24 hours traveling yesterday. Oh. Hamish. Well, no, I was going to say you, Trip. I was going to go for you, Hamish, because you're another tired boy. So I thought we'd do the tired lads first. And then... <laughs> oh. oh, such a warrior trip. I'm, you're like, I'm not tired. I, I normally feel very tired, but anyway, I'm good. I know, you're just soaking up all of our energy. I'm just yeah. So um, I've had a. Colin Robinson. What? Who's that? Energy vampire Colin Robinson, yeah. What are we doing? One of the best characters in TV. <laughs> oh, he's so good. Segway, segway, segway. Good? <laughs> um, so I yeah, mean, I, I've, I've, uh, I've had a, I've had a very busy week. Um, I've had a week off, and now I, I'm actually generally looking forward to going back to work to have some time off. Such an and, adult. <laughs> but from, from family. Some time off of doing work. Um, no, so. Logan was off, so we completely redecorated his bedroom. And it's been really fun, actually. I've been listening to um, some podcasts, for, for some fab podcasts, and mostly listening to Yorgos stream while I'm doing oh, yeah. all of my work. Seriously, people, you need to go check out Yorgos. He's incredibly entertaining. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, managed to strip all the walls, paint that, make completely remake the furniture, and at the same time, jump outside and paint some planters. I've just been dancing between two things. And then just today, the reason I'm so bloody tired, i tell you what, right. Oh, here's a fun, weird story, right? So as I was taking all the stuff out of Logan's room, I was just like, just get started on it. Right, okay, this did you find? Well, he's 13, so I found stuff that I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> not a kid anymore, are you? <laughs> I just, and that sounds really open ended. It wasn't actually that bad, but it was some, some wit, some stuff. And so, like, why? Uh, there's actually no way to get around. So far, <laughs> it's so far. <laughs> it's not that bad. Just, just anyway. So as I was taking his um stuff down, checking it outside to go and take it to the tip, I saw this this two, uh, two ladies with two kids, baby, and as they're walking, you know. That, that I was like, oh man, it's like a car boot sale. He just slowed down a little and had a few more looks at my house than you normally would. Like, you know, you have a curious look and then you carry on. These ones were like, have a look, have a look. I'm like, okay. And as I was going back upstairs, I was like, they're going to rummage through all of this stuff, which I didn't care for. Go help yourself. So I was going to yeah. go throw it in the bin anyway. Well, you'd rather it go to a lovely yeah, home. Yeah, absolutely. Than, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, you know, car boot sale isn't outside my house. So anyway, as I come back down, um, my wife pulls up and she's just talking to someone. I'm like, I knew it. I knew they were rummaging for all my stuff. Just don't dump all like the actual rubbish all over my drive, but just take the good stuff. Anyway, I was coming down and bringing this mattress down and they were like, oh, uh, you getting rid of that? And this is like a scene of, um, of Carl Pilkington. Where yeah. there's a bit where some guy buys his sofa and he's like, Can you walk it round for me? And he ends up walking <laughs> that sofa all the way to his house. So, anyway, I'm taking this sofa, this stuff down. And they're like, Oh, what are you, you going to do? I was like, Oh, I'm going to bin it. Oh, we have it. What, the whole bed? Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Like, you know, oh, we only live sort of around the corner. Right. Okay. 
led to you then. Carry it round for us. No, no, I was, it was all in bits. Take it, around. it was all in bits. It's an IKEA bed. I've got a right. So I got, so I've de flat packed it slightly, and then yeah, I've dumped all in my car and brought it round. <laughs> and why didn't you get them to come and pick it up? Well, they don't have a car, Simon. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just like, I just saw these two kids, and there's a baby, and there's these two parents. This is and... classic Hamish, though. I know, no, but we they, joke. They... did we not joke that Hamish would give his own house away if you? Um, oh, yeah, it's true. We we, we have learned. <laughs> we they have say, learned. Oh, you Hamish from I'll push push the point. point. You're like, please take my bed. Do you want a bed? <laughs> I'll drive it to your house. Well, guess what? Do you want this? Want a bed? I was waiting for the. I was waiting for the punchline that. He'd given it all away, and then Faye's like, no, 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 we need to put it back in yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> no, the point was I got it round to the house, and then they literally, <laughs> like, as I've got all this... Do metal token as well? <laughs> do you want this metal, <laughs> metal token? They're like, I don't even know what this is. Preach. Take it, take like, it. I, I, yeah, I just put it on there. Light. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, but they, then as I got all this stuff around there, I was. Just, they went, you think you can... Make it. I went, no, I'm doing that. No, yeah. you're joking. No, 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 I don't believe no. it. No, they did. They, they said, minute. no, you way. think you can make the bed? And <laughs> clip, so, in short, these people, the, the, the two the two women and their kids were clearly oh. like renting this place out. The plate, as I dropped it off, the place didn't have much furniture in it. You can tell they're, 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 they're a bit team. strapped for cash. He's a good lad, isn't he? He's so the boy. kids needed, or had loads of these cool books and toys and stuff like that. So they, these kids, I was like, go help yourself. Go nuts. Take the lot. This year, like Simon was saying, better than Here's a bed for you there. kids. <laughs> in a dustbin. Uh, rubbish yeah, bin. I thought it was better than a skip. It's kind of uh, it's kind of weird. I've actually... So, yeah, and now I've just been outside slaving away having a hard time painting a fence i painted like half a panel then went i am not painting anymore i am going to be in queue and i'm buying a sprayer uh, <laughs> yeah i brought was it good though mm, well i've never used right. a spray before good <laughs> <laughs> and How i'm now like oh, no it's all right a lot of learning have you used it yet? Have you used yeah 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 i've been outside it? i'm literally covered in paint they was like, where did the sprayer come from? It. <laughs> it's just like, we just brought brushes. I thought we we're going to brush paint it. And I was like, not wrong. I'm, I've got to, I, and I was trying to chop, I'll tell you what was the worst, trying to cut down a tree, like, you know, the, a bush. I had to borrow my dad's strimmer. And trying to strim a bush is, <laughs> is hard work. Simon strimming, strimming bushes oh. effort. Simon, so easy, <laughs> so easy. Simon. I knew it. Old, yeah. uh, old. What about you, old Strimmer Bush? Uh, we've got to wait, keep. We've got wait. to really wrap this up. Yeah. I was just gonna say, I might do. I, firstly, just, just, I I'm want, sure you've got nothing. You just, I can't call me Strimmer Bush. What was I mean? <laughs> um, old trip, so just, old just dad's was, trip, Strimmer uh, Bush. I just for context, say. listeners, before the podcast, we're like, yeah, we're super tired. This one's gonna be a quick uh, one, and we've spent twenty minutes. We haven't even opened the beer. I knew this would happen because I knew this. You guys can do. Just well, you have been. It. You have. It's we're very at... low energy. Yeah. <laughs> But I'll do mine quick because I think we haven't even opened up here yet. Um, I've not really. Been, I I went out the weekends. I've been. Kind did you get of, drunk again? Did you say? Did I you didn't wake get up drunk. I actually Saturday I didn't drink uh, oh. anything. I went for an afternoon tea with some good friends of mine that I used to work with, oh. and then on Sunday I went for a Mexican brunch. Oh, uh, which was very tasty, and I didn't drink that much of that either. So it was actually a pretty low alcohol weekend, which is nice. But I'm going out for drinks on Wednesday. Yeah. Just yeah. Um, it was just a nice weekend. I've been like, I've mainly been looking at our our spoiler card mm. and, uh, and thinking with we've, we've collectively been doing some scheming and some planning about what we want to do because I think by the time this goes out, it will be probably a week to go until just, the spoiler yeah. goes out. Not long so now. We're doing it? a lot of work over the next few days. So, uh, out, guys. So, um, we'll say this, and then we'll maybe move on. But our spoiler is dropping on the 4th of March. We don't yeah. know what time, but... We'll pick a time that makes the most sense, because I think we'll, we'll just wait for a few PM, more people right? to say what time mm. is going out, and then we'll try and make sure we don't clash, which is kind of what we did last time. We moved ours around so that we... I think, I think there's... 7pm is usually a... our drop time. 
yeah, I think so. there's a bit more of a um, collaboration between other content creators because it's going to be such a busy weekend of spoilers. I think people are more keen to work together to to get well, things check out. Check out Fabry. Fabry uh, it does uh, an amazing work on actually locate. So if you really want to locate and know who's doing what and what time and when, Fabry is is the place you just go on their website and it's a content bit and they actually have all the creators on the days and they put the times on it so uh we'll we'll probably say hey fabry if you're listening 4th of march probably around about 7 p.m be realistic yeah guess we should message them and get ourselves on the i know we've said minutes. it everyone listens it's, to push uh, point. it's 20 minutes into the podcast should we open a bit yes uh, please yeah. <laughs> hey mitch what are you drinking oh right i have got a knobhead a knobhead hi Oh, look at that. Here's a proper a brewed cute. by a bit of a knob. Yeah, craft, craft brewed and bottled in a small batches direct beers limit. I don't know who the thing me is. The brewery, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just checking mine because I always forget to look. This is it's why I like going for Direct it. beers, Cox and Yards, and Ashbourne. So it's just obviously this Facebook. There you one. go. It's a bit of a. Bit of a local, that's what I'm drinking. What about you, you old deli stash, Simon? Deli, deli tash. Deli uh, tash, I have it. been away all week, so um, I've just got something out of the garage, which is a 5 a.m. Saint by Brewdog, because I think it's a highly underrated, a highly underrated American red ale. Um, but I have been drinking <laughs> Kingfisher all week. Oh, classic. Oh, nice. Kingfisher, and they also do Kingfisher Ultra, which is like a a light beer and then an ultra premium, which is the strong beer. All right. your favorite? Uh, the ultra premium was pretty good. 5% lager. I'm not a huge big Kingfisher fan, so but I'd like to try one of the other ones. But... What about you, Strimmer Bush? Right. So I got a hot chocolate and chili oh. stout. Yes, I please. think you'd like this one, Hamish. Uh, it's a, a vocation special edition. It's a, uh, it says on the back it's rich, smooth, and spicy, which I um I associate with at least two of those things. Um You are a spicy and... man. Smooth and spicy. <laughs> yeah, not rich. Is that is that what you said? Is that how you said to Kate? Like, hey. That's how I that's how I um yeah. Just so you know, <laughs> I'm pretty smooth and spicy. I'm smooth and spicy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be and the judge of that. She, yeah. Um so yeah, smooth in I'm... terms of body hair, not character. Hey! Hey! Oh, oh, oh. Yourself, oh. A... Okay. Oh, you old smooth and spicy. Pocket Nellas Dos, mate. Pocket Nellas Dos. Um, right. That? What does that mean? Why not? Why not both? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna pull this. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers guys. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, 22 minutes in. Talk about Not flesh and blood. Really. Talk about flesh and well, blood. There is quite a few. I think the first. Quite thing, a bit. I mean, normally Simon would say. Or we'd say, if Simon, what are we going to talk about? But I thought we, we should probably talk about calling Birmingham, right? That's pretty well, huge. Oh, just the, well, the calling well, in the EU, well, right? Uh, like, yeah. It's been a few awesome. days now. We're recording this on a Monday, and uh, the announcement went out on a Friday by our new partners, Living Realms mm. and yeah. LSS, um, that there's going to be a calling in Birmingham in the UK. Not Which to be wow. confused with Birmingham, United States. Yeah, don't go to the US. No, it's, it's, it's no, there was one, but Birmingham, UK, and that will be the twenty eighth to the thirtieth of July, twenty twenty three. Wow, I'm okay. really excited. I'm really excited, and I I said this on um the Discord, but I really think we needed something like this in the EU. We really needed some events to re engage ourselves in the game and have something to really focus ourselves on because I. We don't like worlds just feel so far away and we don't know if we're going to be able to qualify for worlds. Yeah, with the new yeah, with the new OP everybody. schedule for 2023 with no PT2, um yeah. it feels like there's going to be need to be more worldwide um calling level events. Now, yeah. the good thing about the announcement was it wasn't just about the calling Birmingham. Oh, yeah. There was another calling in Antwerp in May. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, May. Yeah, yeah, end of May. And um, it was announced, not an exact location, but that Worlds will be in Europe. Yes. Which is going to be amazing. Like, yeah, that's going to be incredible. That's, that's really good because we will, I remember a lot of, we were, I, 
I, I remember tweeting when people were saying about Worlds. I say it'd be not really a Worlds event if it's only in one place. Yeah, so, exactly. And exactly. If it, having it move around next, is great. Next year, it being in Asia or Australia or, or, or Australia or something, mate, yeah, would, would be like okay. And then we're just kind of like hopping around. Yeah. If, and it, and if they constantly keep saying Pro Tools are in America, kind of be I'll be fine with that. You know, I know that people will say Pro Tools could come into Europe or whatever, but America is such a massive market; it's the best place to put it, stuff generally. In a it's a big market, sense. but it's also an easy market in terms of if you bring to the EU, if you bring events to Europe, then you have a couple of different. Um, issues with nationality and border crossing although the eu is large and covers a, a great landmass there are other places like switzerland and now the uk uh, and scandinavia that do not have a part in europe's in eu sorry so the us is easy to to yeah, run with is. one company. Yeah, and I, I think i agree with hamish like I, but not, not, I think if there's one big either pro tour or world if one of those a year is always yeah. in America or, or North America, Canada should definitely be included in this. I'm, I'd be happy with that. That makes a lot of sense for the yeah. company. It makes a lot of sense for the player base. And it's like, you know, the Pro Tour is in America one year. Next year, it's in... Um, the next year, it, Worlds is in America. I think that's a really... That'd be a really interesting model. And maybe there's not always a major Pro Tour or Worlds in Europe, but as long as we're getting these callings and it's looking like that's what's going to be happening. Yeah, I'm that's happy. it. Uh, it'd, it'd be, it'd be ridiculous. You can. I'm really happy. It'd be ridiculous to think that America doesn't get Pro Tour or Worlds or some sort it's of just, thing. Just the they've numbers, got it. They've got to yeah. get. They, they're going to get a big event in in some yeah. capacity. But they they also have massive number of callings, don't they? Like they, they do seem well, they to can. have. They can, and it, it makes total sense that they have massive. Yeah. That, it, <clears> that they yeah. they can accommodate these callings. They can yes. put them in think, different think, areas, and they just fill. I think they get a fair number of callings. Like I think the, what America is getting is what I want to see. Like each territory get. Mm. And like I think we we shouldn't be looking at America and being like. Well, they're getting way too. Yeah, many. I don't think you're saying that at all. But like, it, no, no, no. It's not too it's... many. It's just that we want that. <laughs> yeah. we want the same thing. And like, we understand. Like, you know, these these are events. They cost a lot of money to run. Yeah. Who knows how much money LSS make off callings? If they make anything, they might they might be like lost leaders for them. Yeah. Just having an OP scene, it's just important. I think. Them, I think it's just making sure know. it's not a loss. I just don't think. Yeah. But um, who but knows. It, it's super exciting and it's what we've always wanted and i mean if you saw the reaction from the eu and yeah. actually from not just the eu community from every community who's just really happy yeah. to see that we were getting these events like there's the american and, and North as well yeah they've got really a reason to that. come over and yeah, well it's going to be yeah it's one a thing great opportunity to travel and like i think it's going to be really yeah. great to welcome some of these guys to the beautiful birmingham um, it's a beautiful city. I actually believe it is a beautiful city. I'm not even being ironic. Um, it's 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 fine, but it's it may... a big fan of Birmingham. This is fine. You know, um, it, it's fine. But it's in terms of the actual place to run an event, the perfect it's... place to run an event. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because it's nowhere near, but it's pretty far away from. No, but it, it, it's it's right near the airport. The whole place yeah. is literally just. If you're gonna run, I remember asking Dale because he does a lot. It's of this a big sort of event stuff. space. He said, um, if there's 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 Four places in the entirety of the UK you put any big event. It's in London, in Birmingham, Manchester, or Glasgow. You yeah. run anything through there, you're going to have it good because there's airports, good transport gets there. But the NEC is usually perfect. the perfect place because of. It's like and NEC and XL, right? Like XL's centre is going to be way more expensive because in London, but it has City London Airport. And just yeah. Lon Lon it's it's London's, just London's just pricey. It's, yeah. just, it's just an expensive. It's hugely city. pricey. I'm Same. really looking forward to to traveling up to Birmingham. I mean, I think I've you know I've booked my hotel. Loads of us have, and we're yeah. just really excited to have this huge. We've we've always said we want. I think we've talked about callings being like a festival of fab, and I really want to really want to do that. Really want to have these like big community events where we can see people that yeah. we've met in the US or that we've talked to on Twitter and have them come over to our. I'd our love country, to see some uh, EU like, communities coming over. Um, it, it's I just, think that's yeah. without doubt. Like we had some at the Battle Hardened and the uh, ProQuest, and it's going to be awesome. It's mm. going to be really, really good. It's really invigorated my like, uh, like not interest in the game because I'm always interested in the game, but like I just feel like I've got a really clear 
point in the future yeah like, like focus towards not not even like, throwing some more logs like, on the bonfire <laughs> yeah like, like it's really like like spurned me up i uh, like and i'm really like excited about it and i think i think we all are. i think loads of people are. Like, i was gonna say one thing about the announcement is that they've given everyone plenty of notice like yes it's they've listened it's the most I think, notice the we've ever got from a calling and they've given a huge amount of notice for the calling Antwerp. They've given a huge amount of notice for the calling Birmingham. And they're going to announce the location of Worlds at the Pro Tour Baltimore. Yeah, so that'll be, yeah, uh, that'll be that'll be really good. And then you you pretty much just guarantee whatever city they say it's the <laughs> or whatever the convention hall of that city is probably likely going to be yeah. the place. Well, let's go. We're, we're, I mean, I'm pretty willing to put my like. All right, it, it's going to be Poland, right? Oh, like, I, you know, it could be Spain. It should be. I think Spain is the only other one I can think. It's Poland yeah. or Spain, but I really could be Madrid think again. It, it will be Poland. I really think those guys. No one. Well, they've shown they can run it, an event but as well. They've put so much work into their scene and the way they are at events. They're always great competitors and very like nice. Yeah, Holy people. <laughs> they just they just always seem. I I think, and then you know, with the they made that like Talashar thing and everything, and the stuff they give out events like all the tokens. I all the tokens, think. yeah. Uh, I I think Spain is an option. You know, we got Pablo Pro Tour winner. I don't um, think it's. I think it's just um, you can kind of really tell where things are going because yeah. uh, by looking at the locations of the battle hardens and callings in Europe, so. Here, you know, when you actually yeah. think about it, everyone's got their bit, right? Germany's got their battle harden, Italy's had their battle harden, France actually hasn't had anything yet. So they I, had they had it like apart from a pro tour. Well, well, I mean, you never know. But yeah, I know what you mean. You never know. But like so Can you UK, here's your, here's your calling. Uh Belgium, here's your calling. You know, so here's your things for your country. Um, and then it's like, oh, Poland and Spain and France hasn't had anything. So you know, I and there is one more calling yet to be announced in Europe. So yeah, I said, true. if that's in Poland, it's going to be in Spain. If it's in Spain, yeah. it's going to be in Poland. Like that's where Worlds is going to be. Or France, saying France it's as well. It's like France is is a real option. Um, I think we we don't know. We're just speculating. I personally would love to go to Poland. I I've never to been to I've Poland. Been. I've heard good things. I've heard Everyone who went for the Krakow. Um... Calling said it was good. Yeah, it's very affordable. I wish I actually think it's important. This means more people might be able to go that might not otherwise be able to afford to go to like a major event like this. Poland's actually, I don't think it's a very expensive place to get. No. Definitely not an expensive place to get beer. I remember looking at the, the the flights to Krakow and it was so cheap, and I was amazed. And I was like, I couldn't go in the end, but I was she was genuinely, genuinely, I was like, this is, mm. this is incredible. Um, but uh yeah there's lots of stuff coming up which is really good and i want to reiterate what simon said it's really good that lss has given us so much notice we've talked in the past a lot of people have talked in the past about not having enough time uh knowing about events not enough time and whatever whatever i'm trying to say not knowing soon enough and they've they've fixed that and i think we need to 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 say to to recognize that they have done a really good job yeah. this. well we done LSS. They, also they, news they this week for something and they've done it i think that's great also in the news this week, uh, and pretty much expected, I think. But Hamish, how glad were you to see the mat design for Pro Tour Three? How much are you going to spend on that? Were you glad, or were you like, "Oh no, uh, <laughs> how am I going to get this mat?" Well, it's beautiful. It, my FOMO just rocketed up, and it kind of just made me feel a little bit like I really want it, but then I'm also, also like, I th- I have got. And I don't know how, I don't know if this claim is real. It's probably not real. But I still think that Art and I Ascendancy mat could quite oh, well be rare. rarer. I don't oh, know about I think it is, yeah. No, I think it is. And then I've got a Viscerai. No, I haven't got. I've got a, I've got a become map the Art from. Uh, no, not uh, the. I haven't got the Become the Art Knight. I've got the you Nebula, Nebula Blaze. Blaze. Yeah. Oh, so you bought that at PT1. Yeah, and I got that before well, Mark brought me it at PT1. Um. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, um, how many maps of Viscerai do I need? You know, and what mm. am I going to do with this map? Because I've got the world's map, and it's just, yeah. I'm not going to lie, it's just rolled up. I've got it rolled up and 
put in a safe place. Yeah. Put it in a frame, mate. Put it in frame. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So it's like, okay, cool. So am I really going to buy a three hundred pound picture? Because that's what, effectively what it's going to be. It's going to be. Can I a ask photo. you a question, Hamish? Yes, would you true. rather have the arc like shard map? Or would you rather have a cold foil rune chant? Oh. Uh, I'll be honest. I'd rather have Before a cold foil rune chant. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. You're always going to use uh, that. that that's going to be yeah. Whereas, and it's pro- it's reasonable. Like, you know, if someone mm. said, "I'll sell one for forty quid," hundred like, quid. No, no, no. Hundred quid. It's fine. Wait, how, no, but how much of the cold foil, um, spectral shields and frostbite's been going for? Don't know. Can't say. What's the point of having this podcast if you can't drive the prices down on the things oh. you want to buy, right? I think twenty quid card, easy. Twenty quid. Uh, it'll probably be a of fine Dell to one grand, easy. I was gonna, no, easy. I was gonna say we'll come back to this because okay. there have been some moves. I've only got one. I've only got one. So. Sorry, sorry. No, no. All right, we'll come back to economy. No, no, go. What are we going to say? Because I think, Hamish, what you say is a valid thing, right? So if you're not going to play on the Ark Knight Shard map, how much would you pay for it? Like, if you've not got them in frames on the wall and they don't mean anything to you personally... Well, they, it's kind of cool. I mean, but uh, just a little bit of me, it's just like, um, you know, I've got a flipping tattoo of a rune chant on my exactly, arm. Yeah. I've got, like... It is one of those things, and it was funny because Fano literally messaged me and said, "Oh, really?" Straight away, and just went, "Do you want to buy my map?" And I was like, "How much?" Yeah. Three hundred quid, three hundred dollars. Yeah, right. I Can't said, do it. I, I, "I said I've got an Arachne map signed by James White." And he was right. Like, anyway, so no, I'm trying to sell that as well. All right, yeah, but there you go. <laughs> so, like. I think I've actually got something the most valuable map ever. James White signature. I've got a push the point map with James White signature on it. Do you know how many there are? One. Who know? Two. Mine. It's only one. Yeah. Simon didn't queue up, so he never got his. I sign. did not queue up. No, I was still playing in worlds. I thought you were going to say you got the most valuable map, and then say it was your time. No, no. So to me, yeah. No, but like, uh, who needs who needs a couple of rune chant? Just slap my arm on the table. <laughs> just like, bam. Just playing with, with like, ice one chant. <laughs> no, but it's it's a bit of me. It's like I I kind of want it for the sake of wanting it. It's but just FOMO. It's it is just FOMO. FOMO. But I know, through. but I know that someone's gonna roll that out on it. the table and go, "Hey, look!" And I'll be like, "Yeah, well, go shove it up your ass." Yeah. Just show them your Visceroid deck tech video of like five thousand views or whatever. It, would you it, would you trade your world's map for an Arknight Shard? I actually thought of that. A bit of me, if someone said it, I would definitely consider it. But I'm also a little bit of a. Mm, I've actually you got one for yeah. free. I could just frame that, you know. Yeah. Uh, rather than having a framed of the Nebula Blade and another framed and I was thinking how many of these flipping things am I going to frame what am I you know yeah. what I mean I'm, I'm weighing it up pragmatically and going if I could Make get one I would I would never say no to getting one but there is definitely I'm it's not name any price it's a reasonable price I'm just going to put on my push the point mat anyway so that's what I was thinking as well as I only play on my push the point mat or um my torrent of tempo mat these days if I'm playing Iron. No. So Mats yeah. are like, actually now becoming Oh Exude. Exude is such a good mat. I just, oh yeah. Sometimes I just yeah. use that one because it's so nice. Mats but... have to be quite like I think now we have over matted. Does that make sense? You can um... tell they've they've pulled away from it. Like you don't seem to they, yeah. they haven't had them as like top eight prices. No, but they haven't pulled away from no, the they trip do because the they go home, to though, you they? go to a calling and you should just see wow. there's a dragon. Is every goddamn dragon has a mat? Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, trip, <laughs> the so Kadachi mat, mat, the Kadachi mat is stunning. Kadachi mat is great. I actually had really? a saber mat. <laughs> you did. You sold that. And I was. I think that was the worst one. No offense. I think two handed weapons on a mat. And there's only one half of a weapon. Is a little bit of a. I don't know. Kadachi is pretty class. I think the Kadachi one looks classy. The Kadachi art mm. is just so uh, classic. Yeah. Like it's so clean. Whoever did that drawing, it's just mind you. I'm looking at my Edge of Autumn mat at the moment, and that is pretty awesome. Like that's got the stand on it and everything. Like it's a whole. Mm. Well, I told you, didn't I? I wanted all the 
the play mats from the Irish starter deck. Yeah. And out that they printed like some really obscure one. I think only Saints got or something. Bittering so, Thorns. My, yeah. my dream is dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Got you, I was so happy. You could like, yeah, yeah, push the point out there. But I was like, wait, where's that? <laughs> Speaking of mats, can I just point out one thing? We have two mats left, and uh, I would like one to of the, say one of them is sat next to me. I think, yeah, yeah, one well, of them is sat next to me. No, it's not. Oh, well, that one's that one's. Is, oh, is that shins? That's shins. You haven't given it to him yet. He said he was going to pick it up at some point, but well, that's just shins. Not been at the same events. We have two. We have. I think there is there is less push the point mats than there are than there are shard yeah. pro tour mats. There's oh, hundred. We only we only printed like fifteen of them, right? Like, 20, no, we have printed twenty. Twenty. Thirty. The push the point mat is is fire as well. Like it's genuinely so incredible. We have <laughs> two, we have two mats left, and we will not make any more. That is it. Well, I mean, never say never because oh, we, we spent I mean we spent a lot of money on that. <laughs> 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 we just look at that. If you're on YouTube, just, Simon just, is bringing. I mean, his we mother. haven't we, we we haven't discussed this. I don't, <laughs> what, 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 what are we going to do with the art? <laughs> what do you mean? What are we going to do with the artwork? I think you should keep. I think you should keep an eye out for this artwork. Oh uh, yeah, maybe we've done something with it that I've not been keeping up to date with. Yeah, yeah I've not been, been keeping up to date with at all. You guys talk on Facebook. Um, well, no, I don't. Oh yes. Yes. I've <laughs> just remembered now. I was thinking, what are you on about, Simon? Oh yeah, we've got some other ways. Anyway, should we? Uh, is there actually some fab things to go on about? Because I'll be honest, uh, outsiders is we're just waiting, man. Right. So one thing I wanted to bring up, and this will be less less relevant when the podcast releases because the the whole Twitter thing will have finished. But um, I thought it was really interesting that Dragon Shield this evening. Or today have released a tweet, basically teasing tweets. a spoiler. Yeah. If they get a thousand retweets in the next three days, what are they up to? they'll release a Katsu spoiler. Now, Which looks sick. Just because it will be released by the time this does come out, um, you're not obviously going to comment on what it does. Well, but it may be really. It may be. Well, I mean, we don't know what it does, so we can. No, we don't know what it. Does. But, but, um, but we'll know what it does by the... 79 retweets, live, live updates. 679. Oh, wow. It was wow. only 350. Really oh, okay. <laughs> well, the Americans have woke up. So <laughs> you never know. This could be spoiled mid-podcast. But the it's art. Really the art. It's like, Dishonored. Hey, what was the first thing that you thought when you saw that art? Accidentally? I had it's Katsu. Oh yeah, okay. I thought it was like because I because the card is called oh, like, like the trip's like it's called that's not what I thought. Hey, you, you and failed. there's a whole thing in One Piece about how oh. Zoro is like a like a a scar on the back is a swordsman's shame, and the whole thing is like Katsu being stabbed through the back, and the card is called Dishonored. And I was like, oh my god, it's trip, so trip you yeah. really you really took that <laughs> One Piece thing. <laughs> remembered something about almost 16 or so years ago and then went hamish i just thought you might it's a really famous i know there's millions and millions of dishonorable references but you I failed if you didn't pick up the zorro reference i don't know i just thought maybe you might have got it it was a bit of, it was it's not just you know it's just Bro. a bit it was a bit Brain was maybe working a bit too too much, but I just thought I really I, that's like one of my favorite scenes in movie. So I was like, this is so cool because it's like he's honest because he's being stabbed in the dick. That yeah, stabbed in the dick. Stabbed in the back. <laughs> um, oh, that's that is, that is that is yeah, like a yeah, know, Maybe there's a sword I didn't see, but um, <laughs> because like, he's like right. a samurai, so getting stabbed in the back would be like very dishonorable. Yeah, compared to committing. That's the yeah. bit, and then Mihawk just goes. <laughs> Yes. yes, and then, and then slices him. <laughs> so just so cool. Anyway, um, but it's a really cool card, and I, I'm really interested to what the like. Are we going to see like a a fallen Katsu, like a like a Katsu? Like, I maybe? don't know if that's Katsu. I, I thought it was Katsu, but it'd be really weird for Katsu's own yeah. move. Is I'm like it's my own fight move. It's, it's, it's Katsu's it's combo, combo line uh, finisher, isn't it? Yeah, but he's got, why is he strung uh, up? Well, that's finisher. what I mean. I don't think it is Katsu. No. He's got loads of Kadachis in his back, though. He's got really similar facial hair. I don't know if you zoomed in on the face, but it looks like it. he's got the like goatee that Katsu has. You can just about see it, I think. Mm. And it's like the long black hair, like which is what his hair would look like if it wasn't in a top knot. Where, so, where is he? Is he back in Mysteria? He's surrounded by like these 
monks, but they kind of look like statues and they've got like fabric over their face. <gasps> oh, maybe. This audio description service brought to you by Dan. Yeah, Trump. well, I just think it's really cool. <laughs> just no, it's a it. podcast, Simon. Yeah. God, describe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. he is being captured by Uz. What's her name? Uri? Azuri. Azuri. Mm. And he, this, he, all those monks that, because she was clearly someone from Mysteria, based on her young art version, that he's probably been captured by Azuri. Well, I haven't looked at the Katsu law in a very long time, but my understanding is that he left City to search for a cure. He's on a journey. Yeah, yeah and he wasn't allowed to leave. And, well, I don't know. I don't remember that. Yeah, but, the monks um, were like, no, you can't leave. Everyone's got to stay here. Because obviously monks. the pits is really associated, this set the outside is, is really associated with diseases. So maybe he's discovered some kind of cure, but he has to sacrifice himself in order to get it. Or No, nah, I think it's you know, That wouldn't be dishonored though, would it? Um, well, it might dis dishonor his clan. Yeah, maybe. He's, he's, he's doing something dishonorable, but the end result is a great good. Maybe. Who knows? Or, Hopefully, we have some real good lore. It's been shame. Well, anyway, it's a really cool looking card. It, makes it does look cool. I, I just wanted to bring it up. I thought it was a cool way to release a spoiler. It was a cool um, one. retweet. We've we've seen <laughs> slightly we've seen slightly different methods from LSS this year this time. Looking at how they're releasing card spoilers, um, we've seen the sort of. Uh, um, the natural release of the pox token and the uh what were the other two inertia token and uh the other one. one was so it, um, it was uh the blood red pox inertia and right. was other one. shows how memorable that was um it was, so a, it was the old woman has it been frailty, frailty. Uh, frailty. So um, we've seen the organic release of those three tokens through the prize wall, well, which I thought it was, was interesting. It was Minmax Games that spoiled it from the calling in Indianapolis. From the, from the calling, yeah. Um, and now we're seeing Dragon Shield running a tweet contest, like retweet, retweet, retweet. Um, so I think, and and obviously they've changed their spoiler season their preview season to be just a weekend yeah um, uh, what's your thoughts on that i think it maximizes the chance that the sort of um the fab hashtags will go through the roof on twitter and other socials during that weekend like it concentrates the uh the hits and the engagement with those social media posts to a very yeah. small period of time I think it's a really interesting idea and I'm really, I, I, I like, I like that they're trying something different. I actually think it's quite refreshing to switch yeah. the way they do things. I think it's going to, I think it's better for the game. I think it's going to be tougher for the content creators to stand out. There's a lot. Yeah. Better. It should be it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like it's, 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 it's a good challenge for us because we feel to make our spoiler stand out. It needs yeah. To be as as great as we can make it which is was yeah. going to be our attitude anyway but as we were saying okay. earlier like they could have given us anything and we would have the passion and the drive to spoil it in a way that is fitting for the game like it doesn't really matter to us what we're spoiling it's just knowing that we're included in that process is an incredible honor and for yep. three guys that love the game as much as we do that could be anything like it, yeah, honestly, it's nice that a lot of people don't get a spoiler who make really, really great content. Like, amazing, content yeah, um, absolutely. Um, somebody made like a I can't remember the guy's name, but it was like some <laughs> like every frames of painting. If you've ever seen that YouTube channel, but it was kind of like about fab and like how it's like a fight, it's like comparing it to like, fight oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, I know you who you mean, and I uh, his, t his Twitter name, and I feel really bad now, but, but people, uh, he's an American that lives in Germany. Germany. And I was like, it um it just seems like there's some really exciting um content coming through, uh, which is really cool. And like I, I wanna see more people get spoilers. I 
this is the thing is every content creator wants more people to get spoilers but they don't want to not get a spoiler themselves and there's always going to be a point where it's like oh there definitely um, there's two there's two content creators definitely on the scenes i don't know if they've got one yet but uh, we do, make yeah. well maybe they do but that we make best and uh free floating uh, yeah that stuff is great yeah did you, i didn't realize that free floating one of the guys the guy is, from cobra kai i did not he's literally a guy a, a, an actor playing cobra kai on netflix is playing flesh and blood yeah, yeah he was at worlds they were they were also um at a pro tour i remember people talking yeah. about it um the uh the content creator's name is carthadigan like cardigan oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cardigan um i'm not sure what their channel it might just be called the same thing wow, so if you can because their video is super good oh the, the channel is called gorganian tone so if you ah so, yes gorganian you know, tone and it's he's really, i mean really well video over. he's been working really hard on his content in the last sort of six months um and to see where he's come from and what he's doing now is like it's awesome it's yeah. really good to see that organic growth of content creation yeah and and streamers as well i'll put i'll throw yorgos in the hat he's literally been streaming every day yeah on on twitter daily you know and he's pushing out gameplay tactics on talashar on on Talashai, he's also just been streaming, talking about his thoughts. He's just literally yeah. like a regular content streamer on Twitch, which is something I just don't think we see quite enough of. I love that that we have that relationship with Yorgos from the like, yeah, from the first deck. He was tech, like yeah. one of the first people I would say. Kind of, we did a really big deck tech with him outside of our kind of immediate yes. group of fab players that we yeah. knew. He was like the first image. real. Um, guest of yeah uh, like that, we, gave, we want a serious for taste for like, really going and up, approaching like, people yeah, yeah. That, exactly I mean, like like the idea it's like yeah we can just reach out i remember hamish used to say this it's like turns out if you ask people they say yes <laughs> they do yeah. they literally like, people people you, love ask. <laughs> people love jumping on especially other content creators especially us yeah. you can more than welcome to ask us anyone but I, 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 I actually realize that we get a little bit more wilder when we're just we're not, so when we're well. not on ours because we don't have to edit it. That's the best yeah. bit. <laughs> That's the best bit. We That's can just talk. Yeah. Talk and go. Love and that. but uh, what well, has something we've been saying over the last uh, couple of months between ourselves, like if there are people out there streaming events and they want casters for big events or mm. middle-sized events, like we'd be happy to come along as long as it fits with us. And uh, do some more casting, get some yeah. more experience under our belt. Like, well, just... we always, yeah, we always say this, don't we? It's like we're just willing to take on any opportunities. Yeah, way because we're kind of here for the ride, and like whatever comes our way, we'll. You never know it. when the ride's going to stop, so we want to make the most yeah. of it. Yeah, right. Uh, we should say, like, uh, I think we're kind of we sort of wrapping up a bit. Yeah, say. like uh, just wanted to flag again. We talked about it earlier about how we got a partnership with Realms. Uh, like. It would be two weeks by the time you're listening to this podcast. I'm uh, just really happy with how that was received. People, yeah. And just a reminder, like if you do um, join our patron scheme, you get a five percent discount on the Living Room store. Um, so if you do the math, uh, you might realize that, that might actually be a pretty good deal, uh, <laughs> depending on how much you sign up for. Push the points. So, uh, but there will also be some other benefits coming further down the line, and uh, we've got some really exciting projects in mind uh with living realms in the future that we'll um hopefully be able to talk about yeah it is a good time to be a patron honestly we we always say this but seriously if being being a patron now we've got something being made that we're going to be giving all the patrons yes and uh gonna be a good one anyway I felt very high. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I almost went into the post podcast chat. Yeah. About how no, well not it. quite. <laughs> <laughs> finished the podcast. We're so not done just, yet. That was really what? high, high tempo. <laughs> oh, oh, like, I thought, oh, are we not done yet? <laughs> yeah, we're not done yet. Wait, how, what's we're not that, done how, yet. Happened? Simon. Oh, it's been. It's, it's been 53 minutes. Yeah, oh, Simon. It was later. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on. Talking? What? Final <laughs> point, Simon. <laughs> so, no, I was just. I was going to say. It's so weird for me. Normally, I'm not I mean, yeah. I was going to say, um, the first thing you'll see, like tangibly, of our relationship with Living Realms is probably going to be some box openings and some uh, product review of Outsiders. So they're kind enough; they're going to send us a bit of product each, so we can open it. Um, probably live on stream, 
and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at what the cards are coming out and hopefully have a look at some of the Blitz decks that are coming out with the product as well. Really looking forward to those. Yeah, um, I had an idea as well, which um, I know that Yorgos and Faino have kind of said yes to. You guys haven't got a clue. Say yes to you. Now. <laughs> um, wow. But there, we're, we're thinking of um, doing a bit of a deck tech on like some of the newer heroes like Azuri, uh, Riptide, and maybe seeing what we can do with the other ones, but kind of getting like a first post idea yeah. of what you know Yorgos is going to. What direction you what, can take the hero? Yeah, in. and we're just going to Fano and Yorgos, and I'm also trying to reach out to Daniel Corras as well, mm. Pablo's testing partner, and the guy who did the Rhino deck tech. Um, so popular. all of all, for, so just getting some really top players from different yeah. areas around um the in the fab community about what what to sort of start off at, on a CC basis on heroes, and then we, yeah we can break down some of the blitz decks as well. So plenty of content for outsiders um to come. Really yeah, yeah, for new players, experienced players, good time to go on living realms yeah. which you can also go on living realms on america they do ship out to areas in america as well so it is worthwhile going through living realms that way as well be a patron five percent five percent discount loads of content coming you know, mode now. Hey, oh, um, this. i've got this new t-shirt i'm happy as hell it's a die dark t-shirt it's sick yeah, as hell cool. elden ring seamless co-op i'm doing that in a minute <laughs> If you haven't heard of it, go look at it. Five percent discount, Living Realms. Ah. Fish bash boss. Fish bash boss. We outy. Love you. We outy. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>